Do you want to know more about the different lesions you can see on skin? When I first qualified, I used to get a bit mixed up with all of those lesions. So today I'm going to spend some time talking you through the various lesions and how they might look in the actual live animal. For the best veterinary tips, please subscribe to the channel and if you click on the bell, you will be notified whenever we release a new video. My name is Anthony Chadwick. I'm the founder of the Webinar Vet and have been a vet for 31 years, having spent a lot of my time doing dermatology, first opinion and referrals. So we talk about primary and secondary lesions in dermatology and I'm going to talk through the primary lesions first and then we'll talk about the secondary lesions. Erythema is redness in the skin which disappears when you press a glass slide on it because it's just inflammatory or inflamed blood vessels which will blanch when you put pressure on them. Purpura is when the skin is reddened but when you press a slide on it uh, there is no th there is no disappearance of the red and that's because that's due to hemorrhage within the skin. A macule is a fully circumscri circumscribed spot which is not really very palpable and is usually um, there's a change in color so the macule it may be a, a a depigmentation. If it's bigger than one centimeter, we then, strictly speaking, call it a patch. A vesicle is a small raised lesion with fluid inside it, uh, usually translucent fluid. So it's it's a clear fluid within the vesicle. And if the vesicle, vesicle gets very big, I think over three centimeters, we then call it a buller. And we see these more commonly in diseases like immune mediated diseases. A pustule is also a raised spot, but in this case, it usually came, contains pus filled uh, fluid and it is um, usually containing inflammatory cells, which are usually caused by an inflammatory or an infectious cause. Pustules can be follicular or non follicular. A papule is a small raised swelling of the epidermis or dermis. If you see many of these together, then it is classed as a plaque. A wheel is a, a raised lesion that uh, we can sometimes see in allergic cases, and we would often call this a, a hive in human medicine. They're usually fairly transient, and, and so if you're not careful by the time the owner brings the dog or the cat in, they may have disappeared. A nodule is a raised circumscribed lesion involving the dermis. A tumour is a large mass that can involve the epidermis, the dermis or the subcutis and tumours can of course as you know be benign or malignant and this will affect sometimes the rate at which they grow. I now want to talk about the secondary lesions. Some of these lesions can also be primary, but they're more commonly seen as a secondary problem. A scale refers to flakes of keratin that come off the stratum corneum. This is a normal thing that happens in all animals, but in primary diseases like ichthyosis, that can be accelerated. These primary keratinization disorders are quite uncommon. If you see scale, it is much more likely to have, have occurred because of a primary problem, such as a pustule. When a pustule ruptures, it forms an epidermal collarette, which is quite scaly and can, of course, then be seen on the skin. Also, with calotiosis, if a puppy or a kitten develops an infection, um, an infestation with calotella mites, this will also lead to an increase in the production of scale from the skin, but is again a secondary problem. Hyperpigmentation of the skin occurs after inflammation or sometimes because of hormonal diseases. 
it's due to an increase of melanin in the skin uh, and is usually a sign of, as I said, either a chronic inflammatory disease or sometimes with endocrine diseases as well. In some cases, we can see an erosion of the skin. This is where there has been, there is a deficit in the epidermis, whereas deeper uh, lesions involving the dermis as well will then be known as ulcers. So an ulcer also involves the dermis uh, as part of the problem. You can also see atrophy of the skin where the skin actually becomes thinner. This is because we're losing um, internal structures in the skin like collagen and elastin. We most commonly see this as a secondary feature in diseases such as uh, Cushing's disease. However, again, it can be seen in some rather rare conditions like Ehlers-Danlos syndrome or skin fragility syndrome. But usually if we're seeing thinning of the skin, particularly in older dogs, do think of hyperadrenocorticism or as it's otherwise known, Cushing's disease. In some hyperpigmented skin, we can also see a lichenification that's occurring. And this is because the skin not only is hyperpigmenting, but it's also thickening as well. Uh, and that can also be quite scaly. And, and probably the best example of that is a chronic malassezia dermatitis, which has not been treated properly. Uh, you can end up getting a chronic thickening of the skin as a way of trying to protect the skin, but it goes out of control and you see this like kenification, thickening of the skin and hyperpigmentation of the skin at the same time. Comedones can be seen in the skin where there is an infilling of the follicle with um, keratin, bacteria sometimes, and even demodex mites. So if you see comedones, it is always worth scraping for demodex mites. However, you may also see it in diseases such as Cushing's disease. And there are, again, some very rare diseases like Schnauzer comedone syndrome that can form comedones as a primary problem. But again, usually if you see comedones, this is a secondary problem. Do think of Cushing's disease and demodicosis. Finally, alopecia, if seen, can again be primary or secondary, but is commonly secondary due to self-trauma. Many of the cases we see in dermatology are itchy and they will remove the hair by scratching and biting and nibbling. So if you see alopecia, the first thing that you will think about is probably a, a traumatic cause. The easiest way of actually solving this is to take some trichographs, so to take some hair from the skin and see if the hair is actually um, traumatized at the at the the actual shaft. In other words, has it been nibbled away or is it falling out in its entirety? If it's falling out in its entirety, maybe with a telogen bulb, that would be a sign that it may more likely be an endocrine disease or some developmental alopecias that we can also see as well. So with the secondary lesions, we should always consider a primary cause, but almost invariably, the secondary lesions that I've discussed, the, the secondary cause is much, much more common than a primary cause. So if you just like to like the video below, and obviously please do leave a comment if you found this helpful or if there's anything else that you would like us to talk about in these weekly videos. So are you a vet or a nurse, vet nurse or a veterinary student or a veterinary nurse student? If you're any of those things, then please do go over and look at our uh, platform, thewebinarvet.com and Wikivet as well. Some great resources on there. Join the very big community that we have on the platform and we'd love to see you on a webinar or looking at some of the great student resources on the Wikivet website. Thank you.